Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, I want to address a question that I run into from time to time when it comes to pastured pig layout. And that is, what is the best way to lay out your pasture? And here's what I recommend. So if I was starting with a blank slate and flat ground, the, the choice I'd use for a pastured pig layout would clearly be the wagon wheel. I think the wagon wheel design is the best, uh, as far as functioning goes, uh, overall use of your pasture land and managing your pigs. So what is the wagon wheel and, and how do you use it? Well, I'm going to use some illustrations here to help uh, describe or to show what I'm trying to describe verbally. So come check this out. So you can see in this basic design I've come up with, this is about as rudimentary as we can get, that the concept of the wagon wheel is just like a wagon wheel. You have the hub, a centralized location in the dead center of your pastures. And if you're doing pastured pigs where you want to rotate your pigs around, then that hub is a portion that they have access to all the time. The pastures surround that hub, and of course they're divided off into individual groups. We'll say pasture A, B, C, and D in this example. So if the centralized location is a hub, then the legs of your pastures that go off would be spokes, uh, thus make up the wagon wheel. But it's rare when, when farmers are building a wagon wheel pasture layout that they actually make it round. That's just, again, good for the illustration. So let's use an example here of maybe, let's say four square acres. That way it's easy math to do. And instead of doing round, we actually do four individual one acre paddocks or pastures for this setup. Our centralized location is in the middle. And even the hub doesn't have to be round. Uh, you could be square, it could be rectangle, it could be whatever shape you need. The, the key is that each individual pasture has its own unique access to that centralized location. So the functionality is pretty simple. So you've got your centralized location, you've got your individual pastures, and each access to each pasture from the centralized location should be separated by a gate. So in this example, we'd have four gates that could open and close, of course, and isolate the pigs either from that specific pasture section or from the centralized location. So let's say in this example, we've got our entire group of pigs in pasture A. So only pasture gate A would be open to allow pigs into the centralized location. B, C, and D would be closed so the pigs can't wander off into those individual pastures. They come from the pasture area into the centralized location. They're accessing food, water, maybe if you have to treat or medicate or load or unload, we'll get into that in a second. Then there's the centralized location where they can take care of all that. So when it's time to move them to pasture B, you draw them into the centralized location. And what I usually do, or what I would recommend in that circumstance is, if you offer free choice feed, then maybe let that feeder get down a little low, maybe let it even run out uh, for half a day, and the pigs will be more motivated to all come in. You get everybody in, you close gate A, open gate B, so while everyone's eating, you're doing the gate switch, and then of course when they're done eating, ready to go back out, then they, the only option they have is to go into pasture B, because that's the gate that's open. So what are the benefits to the wagon wheel? Why is this such an ideal setup? Well, there's a couple key points. The first is the fact that if you're feeding and watering and doing all your, your contact points with a pig in the same spot, then you can actually build some serious beefy infrastructure. So imagine uh, your feeders. If you're going to use uh, free choice feed, you've got the big two-ton feeders. You set those in place and, and they can stay fixed there. You can put permanent watering in, whether that's pig nipples or it's troughs. You can, you can of course, obviously plumb your pasture so you've got water line brought to that centralized location. You can put additional gates or choke down points or head gates if, it's, if you want to be able to administer medication or be able to treat a pig should he need it. Then you have all that in a centralized location and you can build that pretty hefty and build it to last. So it's kind of one of those make a big investment in something, but it's going to last and it's going to stay in that same spot for a long time. And if you wanted to, you could even build a pole barn structure over top of that centralized location so you'd have shelter. And along the lines of water, instead of plumbing, maybe you decide to do rain catchment off of that. You can catch the rain, put it in a, in a tank, and be able to water your pigs from there. Well, another key benefit, of course, is a very easy way to move pigs from pasture A to pasture B to pasture C to D. However you need to move them, it's a very simple way to do that. I've lamented on our farm from time to time that it's not as easy to move. They're scared of the electric fence. It's you know, an area they've not been, used, uh, not been introduced to or it's new. 
Uh, the topography plays a role there. So there's all kinds of things that, that make moving pigs a little more complicated for us on our farm. But a wagon wheel, where they're always going to feed, they're always going to water, and it's just a different gate open from time to time, it really makes that process of moving much easier and can really streamline your operation. And along those same lines, as I mentioned, pigs are motivated by food, much like the rest of us, and having them drawn into a centralized location where you're going to do everything, you're going to tag them, you're going to administer medications, you're going to load them, you're going to unload them, you're going to sort them, having them come to a centralized location that they're familiar with and used to being in is really going to make that management easier. You're not chasing a pig up a mountain trying to get it down into the barn. So along those same lines, when it comes to time to transport your pigs, a slight modification to the wagon wheel can really help make that process even easier. So let's go back to our example here and say we're going to add an access road between pastures A and pasture C. And we're going to have that access road come over our barn or wherever it is, our, our main area. The road comes in and comes all the way to our centralized location. That will allow you to, to be able to back a livestock trailer in or bring some other equipment in if you need to move some things around or, or do some heavy lifting. You've got that road coming through there and you're not dissecting pasture. Now in this scenario, it would require an extra run of fence because you're not just going to take your access road and put it say at the top of pasture C or the bottom of pasture A. My recommendation would be actually split your fence. So you've got two runs of electric or two runs of whatever fence you're using. And your access road is in between that. That may have extra costs, but there's some benefits for that as well. In my experience, I've seen that pigs are really hard on roads. Uh, flat roads, okay, some degree. Roads on slope, big time. They're just hard on it. Their, their weight, their little hooves, they just tear things apart. So getting that road, having that road access road be in your pasture could be an issue where that's going to get torn up. It's going to stay muddy. It's going to be really funky all the time. And there's nothing worse than working in that type of, of, of funky mud that a pig's been on tearing up. You want to have that clean access, maybe gravel, maybe even paved if you can afford it. Be nice. And what I think would be one of the greatest benefits if you kept that road uh, in between pastures and you had two fenced areas there is you could then just simply drop gates in along that access road how many ever you need and be able to use that for additional sorting areas so if you had your full group that you wanted to bust out into certain sections or breeding and non-breeding then you could just simply close those gates and be able to to manipulate your your group quite easily there just for the expense of a gate because you've already got most of your walls and your your little corrals your makeshift corrals built already so, of course, the obvious question, what if you need more than four pastures? Well, uh, with the wagon wheel, I just laid out a simple crosshair, but uh, I've seen people actually do it like slices of pie. So you actually have, still have maybe a square overall layout, but there's these, these pie slices that go out. So instead of four pastures, maybe you bust that up into eight pastures or, four, or 12 pastures or 16 pastures. It just depends on the amount of space you have, the number of pigs, all that kind of stuff. But there is an opportunity, let's say your land doesn't allow you to keep splitting that up, or you've got more of a rectangular piece and you've got pasture to one side that, that you want the pigs on. Do you duplicate the wagon wheel? We don't have to. You can actually do a modified wagon wheel and incorporate some corridors. So let's go back to our example here and let's add pasture E and F because our, our main field here is, is wider than it is tall. We have to put E and F to the side of both B and D. So just like the access road, I would make a corridor between B and D and stretch it all the way over to E and F that, that has a gate from the centralized location so your pigs can be channeled down through there. And when you get down to the corners of both E and F, then you have two gate options. So you open up gate E, they go into pasture E. You close gate E and open up gate F, they go into pasture F. And that way that allows you to access beyond the wagon wheel's first concentric circle but still allows that corridor to get you back to the centralized spot so you don't have to re recreate all that infrastructure. So the further your pastures get away, the more corridors you have to make and the longer those corridors have to be. So there could be a lot of travel time for your pigs to get all the way back to food and water. So you need to take that in consideration. But this is actually a pretty common modification I've seen. In fact, the Rodell Institute up in Pennsylvania has a pretty neat, in their experimental farming system, they have a pretty neat setup like that where their centralized location is kind of like a high tunnel, but it's specifically built for the pigs. You can see it on their website. In fact, we actually, uh, if you're interested in our podcast about pastured pigs, we, we've interviewed them and we'll be on an episode coming up here in the next month or so. 
but they have a system like that where they have longer corridors to get way far out away from their centralized structure and it still works the spigs still come back so are there any cons to using the wagon wheel design well yeah i think there are there's cons to everything of course to me the biggest thing is you're technically not moving the pigs entirely to new pasture each time because that centralized location they're always going to have daily contact with it so what this allows is a circumstance where you can have an overload of, of several things. You can have an overload of fecal and, and urine. You can have, which then of course leads to parasite load. You can in increase that. You obviously got the wear and tear on the ground itself. So uh, you can end up having a muddy big pit right there because the pigs are in there churning all that up on a regular basis and stepping on it. So it could really become a, a, an area that can uh, be hard to manage and could possibly introduce some illness. Obviously the logical fix to that, and you see a lot of people when they do wagon wheels, they come back and they concrete that section, or they do something to mitigate mud, mitigate uh, the, the, the fecal deposits, all those type of things. So a concrete platform, of course, is something you can easily spray off, shovel out with a, um, with a shovel or with a skid steer or something like that, depending on the scale and the size. That makes it nice, but of course that adds to a lot of infrastructure costs. You know, and similarly to, with the access corridors, you have that same situation. So if we go back to our example of E and F pastures, then the corridor that gets them there, that corridor is going to be traveled twice as much as any other path on this example. So it's going to wear down twice as fast as the others. So you'd have to take that in consideration, maybe improve or enhance, spend, uh, plan on spending money on reseeding on a regular basis. One of the biggest issues that jumps out to me with a wagon wheel is just the fact that if, you, if you're trying to run multiple groups and you want to keep them separate, but you still want to rotate them through a setup, the wagon wheel wouldn't allow that because that centralized location is always going to allow them to intermingle. Whereas an alleyway system, you can, you can kind of have two groups moving independently of one another in the same setup. We'll discuss alleyway more in another video. Another con is this layout does require a lot of upfront infrastructure. Again, depending on how much you're going to invest in that centralized location, you may have a pretty big outlay of cash immediately that may hurt cash flow or, or maybe something you have to acquire debt or really tap into savings to be able to set that up. But I think in the long run, it's going to pay off. It just may require a lot of cash up front. Well, the biggest con for me is what you see behind me. It's lack of flat land. <laughs> I think the wagon wheel works best when you have flat to moderately rolling land. Now let me explain that in a little more detail. So when I look at my farm with the, the rolling topography, the fact that there's a lot of elevation change, it's pretty steep, and why a wagon wheel doesn't work, it's not necessarily because it's strictly the topography. I mean, you could technically take a wagon wheel and lay it down in our valley. It would just have pastures that would be up the side of the mountain. The centralized location could be down in the central part of the valley. You could actually take, take advantage of the stream. You could have the stream running through it, as long as you're playing by the DNR's rules. But really the big issue on our farm is topography then dictates where my access roads go. You know, with 100 acres, I don't have the ability just to go from point A to point B, a you know, straight line if I want to get over to this point on the property. I have to follow my access roads because our land is so steep. So laying down a, uh, a wagon wheel over my roads is going to be detrimental for a lot of reasons. The first is, of course, that pigs, as I mentioned, pigs are really hard on roads. And the roads that I have right now that cut through pastures that the pigs have access to, they just wail on them. So whether they're knocking debris over into it and I got to stop and get it, get it out of the way, or they just like to root around where there's exposed stone or some water, you know, some mineral coming out. So they just seem to, to wail on those areas and just always have those roads churned up, which of course on these slopes promotes erosion. Another issue would be, man, if I tried to do a wagon wheel with the way my roads are laid out right now, I would have a gate about every 50 feet, which would drive me absolutely batty. <laughs> so, to get to the back of the property, I'd have to be stopped, open a gate, close a gate, open a gate, close a gate. That just wouldn't work. So when you look at our layout, you say, well, why don't you just make paddocks in between the roads? And I could do that in some areas, but some of these spaces between our roads are just too small to keep the standard group of pigs that I run on them. Or it's just the logistics of having to, to always channel them across the roads. Anywhere we have a road crossing, of course, we've got to do a gate system to get them from point A to point B. So what's worked for us the best on our farm is really what I call a heavily modified alleyway system. Really, it's just a series of pastures that we able to move the pigs around 
and we're constantly trying to improve on that. I'm trying to even look at laying out roads a little differently. I can't just easily move a road because that requires a lot of, of dirt work and requires a lot of, of engineering actually in some spots because our slope is so hard. But we're going to talk more in another video about the alleyway method. That's the method that uh, Joel Salatin uses and I do like the concept of that as well. So we'll detail that in the upcoming video. So if you'd like to dive into more into the pig discussion, uh, as you've gotten in this video, I want to encourage you to check out our podcast. If you're in the podcast, we've got the Pastured Pig Podcast, which we now have, I think, 64 episodes where we take a dive and look into uh, some of the bigger details of pasturing pigs. So what I do is I interview people all over the country, uh, talk about their setups, some of the uniqueness they face in their operations, and how they actually build their business with their pastured pigs. If you want to get even deeper, then we have our Patreon account where we take a super deep dive into pastured pigs. Right now, we started a series where we're looking at the marketing aspect of pastured pigs as income generation for your farm. And the first episode we just launched is how to do a cost analysis and how to set your pricing on your products. So if you want to check that out, I'll make sure there's links below to all of that and check it out. And I appreciate any support on that side as well. Really good discussion when we talk about pigs. Well, tonight it can't decide whether it's going to rain or snow or do whatever, so we're gonna finish up chores and get to the house. Take care, everybody.